On this week's show, the Georgia Southern football team holds the first of many of their summer camps. We'll talk with Tyson Summers about how things went, and we'll also sit down with Athletics Director Tom Kleinlein to talk about this year's football schedule. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles. Eagles can't fight if they're blue. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And never too early to talk football, right, Mike? Oh, never. Let's get into a little bit of one of the, the concerns or one of the things that a lot of people are talking about, and that is Georgia Southern's schedule for next year. Not as much who they're playing, but when they're playing. They have... Uh, some midweek games, and we're talking Wednesdays and a couple of Thursdays, and I know a lot of this is in order to try to put eyeballs in front of TVs to get Georgia Southern's name and uh, brand out there. I'm on board with the Wednesday. I, I can even say maybe one Thursday, but homecoming on a Thursday night to me is a big mistake. And I think Thursday night football is a little bit different than it was, say, as early as six or seven years ago, because I think now you've got multiple games on Thursday nights that are televised, and you also have the NFL to deal with. You aren't the only show in town. However, on Wednesdays, maybe you are. And maybe in that case, you would take away a little bit of your crowd in order to get your name out. Your thoughts on this? I have to disagree with you a little bit. I think that the Wednesday and Thursday games are just fine for Georgia Southern. They've shown that the short weeks don't phase them all that much. Uh, four games played in the midweek, uh, five if you count the bowl game. Uh, last season they've won all but one of them, so I don't think it's going to phase the players. They've shown the ability to bounce back after a short week. What concerns me more is the amount of travel. Georgia Southern, the only team in the entire country that's going to play four consecutive road games. And then one of those short weeks, the App State Thursday night game, is at home, but it comes just four days after that fourth consecutive road game. So overall, I think this is going to be a talented team. Georgia Southern should be picked to finish near the top of the Sun Belt, but it's going to be a matter of attrition. All those flights to and from uh, really covering some ground there. How much gas is going to be left in the tank for the back half of the season, which has some of the tougher conference games? A tough schedule to say the least with the number of games, not only with the four on the road, but some of the talented teams, the Ole Miss and Georgia Techs that you're going to have to go up against. And you're not playing those guys necessarily at the end. You're playing them toward the middle of the schedule. Back to the Thursday and Wednesday games, to me, the Thursday homecoming game was very disappointing. I know we have a very strong uh, alumni base in the Atlanta area, and for them to try to get a couple of Thursdays off, including homecoming, I think is a, a little disappointing. I know that when the Sun Belt comes calling, that means you're in demand and people want to see you, but to do it on homecoming to me is a tough one. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work out. I am an alum of Georgia Southern, but I've also been in Statesboro, so I can make homecoming if you hold it at 2 a.m. on a weekday. So I can't really relate to what the uh, alumni in Atlanta or even out of state are going to go through. I'm sure it will probably take a little bit of a hit on the attendance, but you never know. Maybe a new situation leads to new ideas. A nece uh, necessity is the mother of invention. So maybe they come up with some new idea. Maybe this becomes a trend. If the Eagles win, I do know one thing, these Wednesday and Thursday games, they're gonna keep on popping up. ESPN has seen the numbers. They've seen the brand of football that Georgia Southern plays, and they seem excited to keep on showcasing that to the nation. Is it a fear that if you turn down the Sun Belt that they'll say, okay, you're, you're done. If you're not going to play on these days or play in these games, that uh, we're going to shun you? Or do you think it's just, hey, we're excited about being? Well, I don't know how much the Sun Belt can really shun a team, but I do think that it's a matter of seeing through what they started. When Georgia Southern made the leap up to FBS, they made no bones about it. They were following, as uh, athletic director Tom Kleinlein said time and time again, the Boise State model. They wanted to get out there, play some tough teams. They wanted to get out there on television. When they renovated Paulson Stadium, 
They did some of the renovations with TV cameras, the ability to showcase games, make it easier on production teams in mind. That way, uh, ESPN, any other network would want to come to Statesboro to make it easier for them to put on a game. So there's no sense backing out now, especially with two years of success at the FBS level. If they're going to continue to rise like that, I think the fans are just going to have to learn to live with some weird times on their games. Yeah, I think Boise State did that. They played some Friday games. They played Thursday. They played anybody, anywhere, That's anytime. A lot of their Thursday night games, when they were kind of making a name for themselves, a lot of times they were the only show on TV at that time. I think that's the big difference. That's where, I, to me, playing a Tuesday or a Wednesday where you're the only team makes a big difference in playing on a Thursday when you're one of four, including an NFL game. We had a chance to talk with Tom Kleinlein, Athletics Director at Georgia Southern, about this year's schedule. The reality is our we're a successful program in the Sun Belt Conference and ESPN wants the successful programs to be on the Thursday night games. Uh, Thursday night football is a, is a unique challenge, obviously, for some people here in Statesboro because our game day on Saturday is an eight-hour experience, and obviously that experience changes when we play on Thursday night. Uh, the exposure that ESPN provides and the coverage that ESPN provides for our team and for our university is, is unprecedented. So we're going to take and seize that opportunity. Any, opp any chance we can get in Thursday night football games are just part of what we're trying to do. Again, our goal and our mission is to serve the university, bring as much attention to the university through what we do on the field as we can. And ESPN football and Thursday night football is a way to do that. The school, that's a choice that the university makes. They pick the date and when they want to have homecoming on, on which particular game. And, I usually just kind of tell them, let me know which game you want to do it on. So they're choosing to continue to do it on Thursday night. And hopefully we can build some events around that Thursday night football game and make it more of a homecoming weekend as opposed to a homecoming game. Well, Mike, another way you get your name out there is to hold a lot of these satellite camps, which have become popular and in some ways a little controversial, I guess. Georgia Southern is going to be holding some of their satellite camps where they go out throughout the state and try to have camps where they have the student athletes come to them where they get a chance to see them one-on-one. -on -one. Recently they held one at home. Your thoughts on the importance of having these kind of camps, these kind of showcase camps, more than uh, camps where they're bringing kids in and teaching them how to run necessarily their offense. Well, now more than ever, Georgia Southern does need those types of camps. It's one thing to win, get people interested in coming to Statesboro. I'm sure that now the, the camps held in town are getting higher quality prospective student athletes than they've gotten in years past. But the ability to go to Atlanta, where there's so many great uh, athletes coming up through the high school ranks that go on to Division I and even the NFL, or even stretching out into the rest of the low country, South Carolina, Florida, also uh, where you see a lot of Eagle recruits coming from, also rich in football talent that maybe the Eagles weren't able to tap just a few years ago. So I think that all the, uh, all the whining about the concept of the satellite camp or holding it away from home, it's mostly coming from the guys who don't need it. It's the Alabamas of the world, the Georgias of the world can complain about it because they're already established. You can have a kid out in California, out in Texas, in North Dakota even, that already knows all about Tuscaloosa and wants to come there, doesn't have to be impressed at a different camp. But for upstarts like Georgia Southern, even Georgia State, I know that they were one of the first to make a big splash holding a camp in conjunction with Penn State, but it's what they need to do to get those quality athletes there. Maybe they come for a bigger name of a university that might be involved at the camp. Maybe they end up staying in Statesboro. Well, we had a chance to talk with head coach Tyson Summers and get a little look at their first camp of the summer. It's a great opportunity for them to see how we function, uh, meet their position coach, and other than just to be a, a handshake or a one-on-one -on -one or a phone conversation, they get to see how they're going to coach, what kind of guy their expectations are, and uh, and how hard they can push them. And I think uh, I think it's a great opportunity for both us as coaches in the evaluation process, and both players and parents and prospects to be able to look and see uh, and making sure that they're finding the right fit. And ultimately, that's what we're all looking for. And, uh, we get a 15-day window through here. We're trying to use them all. This is. Uh, Started off yesterday really for us, attending one uh, with another university, having one here on campus today. We'll go through the week and have a couple different ones coming up here on campus, and then we'll take a week to kind of do the satellite camps, uh, start with that week of the 12th. And so uh, exciting part of that. Looking forward to seeing a lot of good players come out and uh, get their opportunity to be evaluated and see our campus. 
and then be seen by coaches. That's the biggest thing is knowing who's evaluating you and, uh, and looking forward to our camp. Big one that we're having there in Buford with a couple other universities from here in state and excited about all those opportunities. Well, we're excited about it. Again, trying to do the best job we can for uh, coaches and players in our state. That's what we're trying to do. Obviously, taking guys from the state, high school coaches' sons from the state are obviously going to be there. And, uh, and, and looking forward to having as many prospects as we can. Uh, we're not looking for as many colleges as we can get. We're not looking to see how many logos we can put on a poster. We're looking for people. And uh, I think we'll know that our coaches will be out and the coaches from those universities will be there as well. And as we mentioned, some of these other camps going on throughout the summer in different locations throughout the state and even, like you mentioned, in the Low Country or in the Florida area. Well, that'll wrap things up for now. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you again soon.